and we, we're good on a delay now. I can go. Yes, we are live. Okay. Well, hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining the Finance New Orleans March 23rd uh, board meeting. Uh, I do want to start with roll call. Roll call. Chair Edgar Chase IV. Present. Vice Chair Andronika Morris. Present. Secretary Treasurer G. Wade Wooten. Board Member Giselle Johnson Banks. Board Member Charles Brown. Present. Board Member Stephen Smith. Board Member Hunter Thomas. Here. A quorum is present. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to any old business. I see none here, is that correct? That is correct. All right, we'll, we'll keep moving on to new business, which we have none as well. Uh, so next I will move for a motion to approve the uh, board meeting from February 23rd. Has everybody have or will take a little time to review those minutes? Uh, if you have any questions, then I'll look for a motion for approval. So moved. And if you all are comfortable, I need a second. I mean, a second to approve, not a second to read the minutes. <laughs> I'll second that motion. All right, the motion has been... Uh, Properly seconded and approved. Are we able to move on to the Finance and Investment Committee report? Yes, I'll take it from here. So, uh, hey, Byron. Hey, Byron. Yes. This is Jay. Just one second. We we w did we have any objections to the minutes um, before we just for just so um, Nash can make sure she notes it in the, the record. I know we had a, a motion in a second. Do you want me to take a vote on the minutes? Uh, yeah, just ask if, if all are in favor. And if okay, any, if, I got if you. Yeah. Okay, Thank all you. in favor of approving uh, the February 23rd board meeting minutes. Say aye. Aye. Any aye. Hearing, aye. Hearing none, motion approved. Okay, we're moving on to the finance committee to report, Mr. Badger. All right. Good afternoon, board members. So I will cover uh, an audit update or provide an audit update, then move into uh, the market report and then provide a financial status update. Uh, so as it relates to the audit, uh, we are preparing for that engagement. We have uh, had our pre kind of pre-engagement meeting with PNN to kind of plan and discuss our uh, this, any significant changes from the prior year and just get organized um, ahead of the audit engagement. Um, that engagement is expected to start on May 3rd. Um, and we expect to issue our actual report no later than June 30th um, this year. Uh, the site window is, is uh, it is tight, but we have uh, been notified that the Louisiana legislative auditor has suspended the statewide agreed upon procedures. Uh, those requirements aren't uh, needed this year for local and quasi government entities. So uh, with that, um, the auditors expect this year's engagement to flow much faster and smoother given 
um, there won't be that heavy lift on that end. So um, I'll provide the board with updates as that engagement starts and just make you aware of any issues or concerns that arise there. Any questions on that? All right, so I will move on to the market update now. Um, as it relates to the market, uh, the feds met last week and they presented their quarterly projections. Uh, once a quarter, just to show where they think interest rates will go in the short term and the long term. And uh, the markets were keyed in on that meeting because there's been a lot of changes since their, their last meeting. And so, you know, we've seen uh, the 1.9 tri uh, trillion stimulus package uh, get enacted. Uh, there's been positive news on the COVID front. Uh, there's been a, an effective deployment of vaccines. And then there's news now of the, of the administration drawing up their next big proposal. So, um, you know, it's been some, uh, a lot of highlights uh, to talk about in those projection meetings. So what came out of the meetings was they decided to dial up their economic growth ex expectations, um, but they signaled that there's no uh, expected interest rate hike at least for the next two years. Uh, so rates will, will remain the same, I expected to remain the same uh, for the next two years. Uh, real GDP growth, uh, they're expecting 6.5 this year, which was 4.2 at the prior meeting. Unemployment rate, uh, they expect, the expectation uh, is that it'll fall 4.5, which it was 5% before and now they're expecting inflation to kind of run at about 2.4 versus 1.8 on their prior uh, projection. So uh, a lot of these developments have fueled a lot of optimism in the market. And, and so we've seen evidence of that by the increase in interest rates in the bond market. Uh, we've seen a 10 year treasury rise for eight weeks straight. Uh, we've seen muni yields rise over the past couple of weeks. You see mortgage rates are starting to creep up um, there because they track the 10 year, uh, the 10 year treasury, um, but they're still relatively low and favorable, but they are creeping up slightly. Um, on the economic data front uh, for February, there were uh, some significant impacts from the, uh, the weather related event that kind of affected manufacturing and consumer spending. Uh, so there was some, uh, adverse numbers there. Um, in terms of green bonds, that's been in the news a lot lately. Um, they've actually reached 54 billion in total cumulative issuance. Um, a lot of that's been driven by the low interest rates and just the growing interest in the green investments. And so we're starting to see about, uh, over the past couple of years, about 300 municipal issuers in 43 states have issued these green bonds. And then on a local front, uh, the most recent unemployment rate increased to 9%, um, and that's the January number. Uh, in December, it was 87 So there was an increase in the Orleans, Orleans Parish area on the unemployment rate. And then finally, uh, as we all are probably aware, the city received their $378 million in stimulus. And the mayor is expected to, uh, well, she issued an executive order uh, to put together a task force to determine how to spend those funds. And so uh, they're saying more details on those recovery plans um, are set to come out in the next few days. So we're staying in tune uh, with that. Any questions, comments on the market report? All right, well, I will jump to the financial status report. So this report is as of June of January of this year. Uh, you'll see that revenues came in at 30,000 to a budget of 33,000. And then on the expense side, we had actual expenses of 130,000 to a budget of 189,000. Next page, please. So the next page looks into the actual revenue components. Uh, you'll see we're kind of right in line on a single family uh, income line. 
uh, very close on the multifamily program income line. We did have one pilot close in the month of January. And so uh, that slight variance is just uh, a matter of the closing cost um, versus the estimated uh, closing costs in our budget. Um, you'll see a miss on the investment income line that's just related to uh, lower interest rates on our accounts. And then we have a slightly favorable amount on the other income line there, which uh, is the most of that is the 618 Peron Street lease, our revenue. Next page, please. This looks at our expense components, which most are favorable across the board. As I mentioned, uh, 130 to a budget of 89,000. So there's 58, 59,000 favorability there for the month of January. Nothing much to report on the next two pages. Uh, basically, we normally have our uh, historic revenues and expenses here, but since it's the start of the year, there's nothing to report. Um, the pathways portfolio, there wasn't any revenue in the month of January. Slight, um, slight bit of expenses at 4,000 for January. Next page, please. Balance sheet composition remains fairly stable uh, given the minimal activity. And then the last page, this shows our cash and cash equivalents. We're at 10.7 uh, as of the end of January. That is down slightly uh, by about 86,000 from the December number of 10.7. And that concludes my report on the financial status. Any questions, comments? All right. Thank you. Thank you. And, and before we go, Mr. Brown, I just want to uh, make sure that, that the questions you had in, in the finance committee, we were able to address and answer all those. Mr. Brown, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Can yeah. you hear me now? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Just uh, I wasn't able to chime in to that uh, finance and investment committee, uh, and I have a couple of uh, suggestions, or I'd like to make a request. Uh, the first one is that we separate our community development support fund. Uh, uh, and not uh, from the general operating and business expense fund. That it be separated out like we do our green mortgage program, like we do our sustainable development program, and our community support fund be separated out is my request. Okay, and that has been noted. We appreciate um, the request, Mr. Brown. And uh, there, I am uh, looking to uh, enhance the reporting package, uh, and that will involve calling out those different uh, those different funds. Uh, one of the things that I needed to do in in advance is just restructure the the chart of accounts. So behind the scenes, we are accounting for those separately. Um, but uh, going forward and probably in the second quarter, we'll, we'll have that package uh, prepared and ready to have those funds called out as you suggested. Well, that's great. Uh, the second item was, uh, and I've already had the opportunity to speak to the executive director. Uh, that was a question uh, at our last meeting about signatures on checks. And uh, I think that has been reviewed and, uh, and to make sure that I'm straight on it, that we have a threshold of one signature by our executive director of amounts up to $15,000, uh, which is good. 
And uh, <clears throat> above that, it would require the signature of our Secretary of Treasurer, uh, Mr. Wooten, above that. And that relates itself not only to procurement, but it also relates itself to other items that we have in our operating budget. Just a comment. Uh, and thank you, uh, Damon Burns, for the uh, update on that. Uh, I'd just like us to note the fact under uh, our reserve fund, uh, it's uh, depleting itself. Uh, just to give you some background on this, uh, in the 1979, I mean, 1989, 90, and 91, we did a, a CMO. Uh, it's a collateralized mortgage obligation bond. Uh, at that time, I think I was Secretary of Treasury on the board, and, and uh, the director was, uh, the chairman was uh, Johnny Jones. And we went to New York and we sold those proceeds. <clears throat> you have to check in the executive director's office. We have green books, and those green books are voluminous. They're about at least three inches thick, and it notes out the proceeds of the uh, investments that were made by investors of $5,000 tax exempt mortgage revenue bonds. Uh, I think we produced something in the neighborhood and the executive director would have to tell you that. I think it was something like $70 million and we've been able to uh, use that as our reserve fund from almost 20 years now. But it's depleted itself now to about 10, six and I'd just like us to be conscious of the fact of uh, our reserve fund and how it's uh, depleting itself at an accelerated pace. And um, the last item I had was um, a request again for board insurance. Um, we take the position with our pilot program of only on an interim basis, taking possession of the properties that we have under our pilot program and I think it would be prudent on our part to have board insurance. We've had that before. And uh, that's an item that uh, I'd like us to maybe discuss. And I'd like to see us get board insurance uh, for those, for the board members. Uh, those are my only four comments that I wanted to uh, make. And um, make those requests also, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, Mr. Brown. And, and, and I, I'm glad you brought up those two. And I think Dame and, 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 and staff and Ms. Russell, maybe you can help us dig into uh, board insurance and, and as it relates to uh, just coverage as we look into these different pilot programs that we are uh, approving. And going back to uh, that reserve fund, I think that was well stated that the CMO starting with the 70 million uh, some odd dollars and now we're down to about 10, seven, uh, just making sure that we're, we're finding ways to, uh, to figure out another way to get 70 more million dollars in this reserve fund so it, it can outlive all us on this board and, and, and have that number going up instead of depleting. So. I think staff and Damon have been looking at different uh, projects and certainly these different programs coming online uh, should help that number to start to turn in the opposite direction. But it is always a, a, a good way to keep eye on that to make sure we're doing the right things in the right way. Is there any other questions on the finance and investment uh, committee reports? If there are none, can we have a motion to approve? I move that we accept the report of the Finance and Investment Committee. Second. It has been moved and second. Can we uh, take a vote to approve? All in favor, say aye. 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 And that is, 
and that is with the necessary comments, Mr. Chairman. Correct. Any nays? Hearing none, motion to approve the uh, Finance and Investment Committee reports have been approved. We're moving on to the Program Committee reports. Thank you, Chair Chase. Uh, just a brief update regarding the uh, program committee and um, Chair Morris or Vice Chair Morris who leads the programs committee. Um, please chime in at any moment when you wanna provide, uh, provide some color to our conversation from last week. But in short, we provided the board or the committee with uh, a timeline on launching new programs. Um, there's still some work that has to be done as it relates to uh, building out our reporting function, the dashboard and the information that's been requested. So the staff is working to figure out solutions on that end. Uh, but our, my, our main priority at the moment is launching our strategic plan uh, as long, along with the new programs that we've been working on for some time. So the Green Mortgage Program, uh, as well as the Sustainable Developer Program which continues to evolve and we have a number of new features to add to it. So it's an ongoing process, uh, but we do expect for activity to pick up in, uh, in April, which is when we uh, plan to announce the program. Um, and at that moment, we'll start rolling out individual programs piece by piece. We won't do it all at one time, uh, but we do have a formula for getting information out to the community. So more than anything, you're going to start seeing some of that marketing activity that we've been planning on for the last few years, and we've held back on it just because we weren't quite ready to, to move forward with all of our pieces in play. But now that we're more organized, we're going to start activating these programs and these announcements. Um, so it's just a heads up for the board that you're going to start to see um, more and more come out about Finance New Orleans, and we, we think so far... Uh, with the pre-development and the pre-marketing that we've done, there's a lot of excitement and expectation for us. Um, so we think we have good momentum and um, we wanna deliver some numbers early. It's gonna take some time to, to catch up on that reserve gap that we talked about earlier and that the board mentioned. Um, but essentially we're designing programs that are sustainable, that have the ability to create public wealth because we do think public wealth is an important part of the equation it allows us to add more value to the community and, and be that wealth uh, mechanism for part of the community that does not have uh, the necessary wealth to enter the private market. Um, but it would essentially change their trajectory if possible. So that's why public wealth is important to us. And the programs um, that, were talk, that were mentioned to the committee last week, uh, all of them are designed to generate that public wealth while delivering the impact uh, that people need today. So Vice Chair Morris, uh, that's it from our end, unless y'all wanna hear any more um, uh, detail about program figures, uh, we can do that. But otherwise, I'll turn it over to you uh, to speak from the board's perspective. So I wanna give the, anybody a chance to ask you any questions that they might have. Nope. Uh, so yeah, the, the meeting we we're um, eagerly awaiting the uh, the rollout of the program and um, the next steps, and um, we're glad to you know we're glad that oh there's a lot of echoing. There we go. Um, thank you, but <laughs> thanks for whoever did that. Uh, so, yeah, and the, the board's really excited. The, the, the program committee in particular is very excited about um, these programs finally being launched. Um, I, I know personally, we, you know, we've been seeing in the affordable housing advocates, uh, them wanting to get more information of, about what Finance New Orleans is doing. And so the board is, is the programs committee is very excited and we are anxiously awaiting uh, how these programs are going to be deployed. And um, I know we have a presentation next, 
to talk about the, the program committee really wanted to make sure that the full board understood um, the staff being brought on board, how they fit into uh, everything and how it's affecting um, uh, not just the work, but also, um, you know, our overall position. So I'm going to turn it back over to you, <coughs> Damon. Uh, Comm Commissioner Morris, the party program, have we taken uh, the ownership or have we taken the title to those three properties that have been approved? Uh, uh, I don't know if you would be the person to ask that question. Um, Mr. Burns. Have I would have referred taken... you to the staff. <laughs> <laughs> have, we taken, have we taken possession of those properties by title and uh, uh, are any of them under construction is my question. Yes, uh, the short answer is yes, we do take title. Uh, our counsel, Ms. J. Brown Russell can explain the mechanics of that process as she led it for us. But the three projects I, that I we- I don't think he's, no, and I, just to, to back up to Mr. Brown's question, he wasn't asking do, he was uh, asking had we. He, he, I think he knows that, he's just timing if, it, if it's happened yet. Yeah. Yes, Jay, do you wanna talk about the, the process and the documentation? Sure. So the, the three projects that have closed, anytime we close a transaction, there's that it's an in, uh, on a pilot deal. That's an indication that we have, um, as Mr. Brown uh, pointed out, taken title to those properties. As you, you all um, are aware, the, the mechanics of the pilot program is that we, we take title, but we um, simultaneously lease back the project. Um, to the developer. And so part of your question, the answer is yes, Mr. Brown, we have taken title. Um, possession is different than title, but we do have title to the property. We, we don't possess the property, but we have, we have the title to the property for purposes of the pilot arrangement. But the project itself is then leased back to the developer in accordance with the, the lease agreement. And the second part of that question was, have the construction started on all of the projects, one of the projects, two of the projects, what's the status? I, I know we were talking about a dashboard to give us some indication of exactly what the status was, but uh, it is currently. That's the question. What's the status? Have any of them started construction? Yeah, I'll let, I'll let Damon and team speak to um, the specifics of each one of those projects. So most of those, I think all three of those projects, I don't have the, um, the closing documents in front of me right now, Mr. Brown, but um, all three of those projects um, are um, essentially redevelopment projects and not necessarily um, ground up construction. And so um, I'll defer to Damon um, if he has any more detailed information on where they are in real time. Um, I'll defer to Damon on that. Yeah, each of these projects is in the beginning stages of construction, Mr. Brown. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the expected delivery period is about 12 to 18 months mm -hmm. uh, for each of those projects. But as we know, um, they've all begun doing at least some light construction work. And there is a process that we're developing uh, in real time to make sure that we keep compliance and keep track of the exact position, positioning of each project um, and its life cycle. So it's at the very beginning stages for all three. Uh, and then we do have many other projects in the pipeline that we're trying to close. Um, so we expect to have quite a bit of activity in constru under construction at once, at least projects that we're providing some sort of support to. Um, and then also those projects will also uh, come to us for bond financing. So not just pilots, but bond financing uh, and maybe even multiple types of bonds to be issued through us. So we're, we're gonna get more and more involved in that construction process and uh, understanding the life cycle of, of each project and making sure we're checking all of our boxes on an annual basis 
as long as we have title to these properties, which is for 40 years based on these early contracts. Um, so we, we do have an ongoing requirement and responsibility to keep track. And that's going to be a part of that dashboard update that we, uh, that we're working on. Well, that dashboard would indicate loan approval have these three properties. We have title, but have the loans been approved for those specific projects? Yes. Great. And Jay, please step back in and talk about the the pilot and how it's typically the, at least in these first three, we were the last money in, so to speak. And that's a part of our underwriting, which is we make sure that the developer has other financial commitments before we agree to close the project. Before we agree to bring it to our board for final approval, we wanna make sure the financial commitments are real uh, and ready to go at the time of closing. Yeah, that, that's an accurate statement, Zayman. Um, you know, the, these deals, um, we, the, of course, the underwriting committee evaluates where the deal is independent of the, the, the pilot. Um, the pilot, as you recall, our pilot program is driven by the need um, to um, include affordable housing. All of these, um, all of these developments include that, which is core to our mission. Um, so the pilot um, is really only available if the project is, in and of itself is feasible on, you know, several, um, based on several different criteria that the underwriting committee reviews. So Damon is absolutely right. It, it really is the kind of the, the, the last mile um, for many of the developers um, and our underwriting committee is very intentional about um, ensuring that the feasibility is there on um, the other parts and pieces of the financing of the project. I'd like to make another comment on another subject. I'm just waiting. And, and, and let me ask you, Mr. Brown, if, if this is not related to the uh, program committee, we, we certainly will head. But if, if we don't have any more questions on that, could we approve these uh, this committee report or have a motion to approve that report? So move. Well, I do want to make sure that, well, before we do that, I um, I did want to make sure that we, um, the committee, the program committee asked for the the um, the spread the, the the organizational chart, and I did want to make a few tweaks to it just to make sure because it still seems to suggest that we're going to be hiring more people than we plan to, um, and so while this is a great organ, you know, make sure who's who and where's what, um, if the staff can take another one more pass at it. Um, and make sure like where they're like Kelly, everybody had my, uh, my, um, my Keisha, my, my, my Sheikah, I'm sorry, my Sheikah, Kelly and Jarvis's level, it seems to indicate that there's another position underneath them, another role of positions. And I, I, we talked about that last time that that is not the case. So um, this still looks like we're planning on hiring another 15 people, which is not the case though, <laughs> just if we could clean it up a little bit and make it clearer. And then with that, I think the, um, that's all the comments that I would have on the program committee report. Yeah, and, and I think to follow up with that, this the org chart is going to be next under the executive management report, right, Damon, or if I'm, if I'm off. So it, we, we can go with the committee program and still after that address this org chart that's up on the screen. That's right. I was going to talk about then it I, the executive report. Okay. Apologies, sorry. We talked about it in program committee too, so sorry about yeah, that. No, no, no problem. <laughs> do we have to? Do we have to approve the uh, program committee report, or did we do that? I, I... No, I'm sorry, I interrupted that. You were seconding it, and I interrupted. So I would, I would happily um, second your um, your motion, Mr. Um, Mr. Mr. Brown. Okay, and may I? Chairman Morris, add the fact that uh, under the Community Support Fund, we have had a meeting 
uh, you have had a meeting, and that would be reported at our, our next uh, meeting on the uh, outcome of the community support fund and uh, that being used for uh, the six homeless shelters in the amount of around $1,600 uh, each. I think the program committee is going to work with the staff to, to determine, um, you know, how the program is working right now, and we'll be prepared to share that with the full board at the next meeting. And if there's an indication of doing anything else at that time, we will talk about that too. Okay. Okay. So the the program committee, uh, it has been moved and properly seconded. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any days? Motion approved. All right, Damon, I think you're up on executive report and, and specifically this org chart. Sure, I have a few items to discuss with the board, but, um, and, I, and I have a list that I'll switch, share my screen, but we can start here since the org chart is already up. Uh, the org chart, and, and we call it the org and accountability chart because it lists out specific accountabilities for departments and areas within the organization. Um, the intent, and, I, and going back to Vice Chair Morris, Morris's comment about the roles that are listed but vacant at the moment, um, this chart was created to show uh, all of the potential levels and potential uh, employment opportunities that we'll have at Finance New Orleans. And it was also meant to communicate not only to staff, but to the board, um, the new hierarchy that we've developed and a new org system that we've developed along with our strategic plan, which calls for being agile and innovative. Uh, so we've gone out and studied a variety of org, uh, org chart models and ways of uh, communicating that org chart. So this was one way for us to communicate it, uh, but also show everybody in the organization uh, where they rank from a reporting perspective, but also where they rank from a skill set uh, perspective and, and how we are uh, titling each of those positions and how we're compensating those positions. All of those things are factored into this model. So we can certainly remove um, those vacant roles from the chart. Uh, it was intended to show um, the potential growth opportunities for our employees, uh, as well as the need. We do have uh, quite a bit of work that has that will uh, pick up as, over the next few months as we roll out our new programs. Um, so we, you know, I, 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 and I know that this, the board has already um, mentioned this today. We have invested and we have been using our reserves to get to this point. And I think that's still, I still think that's the right move by the board uh, because it's gotten us to the point to where opportunities will begin to open up for us to get outside funding um, and outside uh, other types of outside resources. So there's a fundraising plan and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but this organizational model is not only requested by the board, it's been requested by uh, potential funders, it's been requested by partners, um, so a lot of thought was put into this for consultants and staff as it relates to how we want the organization set up and how we want to show growth opportunities to all of our employees. And I appreciate that, Damon. I just think it's really important, particularly given the budgetary concerns that we've had uh, the last few months. Uh, part of this is to understand how the organization looks now. And that is what we, the board wanted and wants. Um, I understand you guys creating other documents for other purposes that makes all the sense in the world. But this request was so that we could understand from an operational standpoint where you are now, positions that are going to be hired on the current approved budget, and that's it. Got it. And, 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 and that, so again, because, uh, like I said, this week the conversation was there's a, there was worry that additional people were going to be brought on board. That was a very expressed conversation we had in approving the 2021 budget. Um, and and I, I don't want anybody to think that 
you know, and I know you guys are going to keep the board abreast. We, if there are any uh, significant changes to the budget, we will be approving that. And so I just want to make sure that everybody, we are, we have a clear understanding of, of what you have now and what you're going to be bringing on board soon. And then, yeah, we can have additional conversations and hear from you all when you're ready to grow and expand. Okay. And we also have this in spreadsheet form. That may be easier for the for the board to digest too, so we can send you that model. But uh, I hear your request, Vice Chair Morris. We'll take one more update at it and uh, give the board back a, a document that you're requesting. So I have a firm understanding of exactly what you're looking for, and we'll do that. Great. So this is great. I mean, just giving us being so we can be clear about this is great. Thank you. Okay, so I, I will move on unless there are any more questions about the Oregon accountability chart. And, 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 and Damon, just so I'm clear and, and to understand, appreciate what we're looking at, what, what we're saying is. I see we deleted the empties, but if there's an empty that we need to fill, not in terms of hope, where we would be in the future, but you, you're missing that now. It's more, that's something that we would want to see on the on the next report. Right? That's right. That's that's right. That's right. Yeah, like anything. Yeah, anything that you're going to be filling soon that we'd love to. We want to see that. But yeah, the aspirational stuff, not yet. Got it. Okay, I understand. We'll make the changes. All right, well, I am going to share my screen so we can talk about a few more points. Uh, and move on with the meeting. Hold on one moment. Can everyone see my screen? Can you see it? I'm sorry. No. No. Cannot see it. Nope. Okay. Now we see it. See it now? Okay, good. So we just talked about the organization and accountability chart. The next item I'd like to make the board aware of is our strategic plan announcement. We've been working on that strategic plan outline uh, for some time now, and we're putting the final touches on it uh, in order to roll out our announcement to the community in April. So we'll begin to do a soft launch, um, meaning uh, so social media, um, uh, email, strategic emails and announcements and press releases uh, that we'll begin to put out in the first couple of weeks of April. Uh, and then that will roll right into uh, our next big, big initiative, which is the Resilient New Orleans Finance Plan. Uh, C40 Cities, who provided us with a grant to create the Resilient New Orleans Finance Plan, uh, we're still working with them to finalize the launch of it and also uh, to connect it to the city's update of its climate resilience plan. So the city's last climate resilience plan was uh, done in 2017, and we reference that report in our Resilient New Orleans report, and uh, essentially it's based on that climate resilience plan. Well, the city is also updating their plan, uh, and we're collaborating with them to um, make sure the finance plan is highlighted in the overall update, and that this is also listed as one of the priorities for the city as the mayor begins to identify funding opportunities, uh, ways to use stimulus money, ways to use infrastructure money. Uh, we're a part of that conversation. So we're working on information right now um, to make our case to be in a, a key investment for the city so that we can fund the Resilient New Orleans Finance Plan, which calls for sustainable housing, affordable housing. It calls for green infrastructure, particularly in those neighborhoods where there will be affordable housing. It also create, calls for job creation. 
someone to install solar panels, stormwater management infrastructure. There's, there are a number of opportunities that will uh, come about from our investment in resiliency, and those opportunities are listed out in this Resilient New Orleans Finance Plan. So we're using it as a tool to jumpstart the conversation and also uh, as a direct uh, way of communicating the opportunities and ways that we can bring in that financing from private financial institutions. And the third aspect of, uh, of this marketing program that we're talking about is the program launch. We have our green mortgage program, uh, which we are, we're about 99% ready to launch it. There's some documentation being put in place. There's some process. We needed to, to add extra people or um, organizational support in order to offer the program effectively. So those things are being done right now behind the scenes. But we've, we've also started doing some pre-marketing uh, of the program to start the conversation. And then we also have the Sustainable Developer Program, uh, which is already in operation. We've closed three pilots as we talked about earlier, uh, but we're also developing bond solutions for those programs, uh, for those projects. So bonds to finance the overall development of the project, and then also bonds, a small amount of bonds to finance green infrastructure. So we, we're looking at many different ideas and there's some excitement among developers about this platform we're building. Um, so we're going to look to close more projects this year, but also add bonds to the mix, um, which goes back to the public wealth conversation that helps us develop more capital so we can reinvest back into future projects. And then the, the last leg of, at least for this year, the last leg of that marketing outreach is our five-year capital plan fundraising. We've already started the conversation with investors local commercial banks about our funding needs. Uh, we're talking to the city, federal government agencies about funding needs, foundations. Uh, we're talking to anyone that's listening right now because we think this is a worthwhile investment. There are new ways of deploying capital that many of these investors are looking at. Uh, so the timing is great for us. And all we have to do is have our, uh, our house in order and we'll get the necessary funding we need uh, to cover that gap but also put us on a path, a path for sustainability and prosperity um, so that this capital can outlive all of us. So we do think we have the foundation, the foundational plan to accomplish it. Uh, and we're looking for those first dollars in. So Mr. Badger has been working on um, updating our business plan. It's an ongoing business plan process that we've, we're going through. Um, but a part of that business plan is finalizing all of the numbers behind our programs, the capital needs, how many bonds are we gonna issue? How many mortgages are we gonna originate? All of those details will be put into that capital plan, shared with the board, as well as potential investors. And the last thing I wanted to mention is a, a new hire. Um, it was referenced in the org and accountability chart uh, that we just looked at a few moments ago, but Mr. Jarvis Lewis was brought on as our director of community engagement. Mr. Lewis comes from the city of New Orleans, working in the council offices, uh, specifically council member Banks office. Uh, and he brings a, a number of uh, years of experience on the public sector and as well as communication. So we're happy to have Jarvis. He's hit the ground running. He's already started to add value on many of these projects that we've been working on with developers. And um, he has insight in, into these projects because many of them he was already working on. So uh, I want to welcome Jarvis and introduce him to the board. And Jarvis, please say a few words to the board. Good evening, everybody. Um, I do believe I know all the board members personally, so it's a pleasure to be able to work with you all now in the newer capacity. Um, I'm excited about the work we're getting to do, and I'll be contacting you all soon to start showing you some of the stuff that we've been working on as we roll out the programs that Damon has been sharing with you all. Jarvis, happy to meet you from uh, District B. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to um, mention a project that I'd ask about an update, and I'd appreciate it if you familiarize me with it as uh, we proceed to use that in our pilot. Uh, the Borden Milk Company on Barone Street is one of the projects that's under consideration uh, right now uh, by our uh, our committee uh, in funding, and uh, that's number one. 
A second one in District B would be the Ferret Street Project, the 4,500 block of Ferret Street. There's consideration of uh, a mixed use property uh, uh, on Ferret Street, uh, right near Cadiz. And uh, there's a possibility that we might be doing something on a site office there. Uh, if you would keep me abreast of how things are progressing with that, I really would appreciate it. Absolutely, I'll be happy to. I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to set something up separately so you and I can speak. Okay. Well, Mr. Lewis, I, I, I want to welcome you to the, the Finance New Orleans staff as well. Uh, Damon and, and, and the rest of the leadership have, have set up a, a lot of uh, programs and a lot of uh, movement to move this community forward and our mission forward. So welcome to the team. Keep, keep your foot on the gas and let's keep moving in the right direction. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, yeah, quick before you have to that concludes my report, Mr. Uh, Chair Chase. Okay. Uh, next up would be executive session. I see we have none. Uh, we, we will move on to other business, which we have the finance committee slates. And I think we've, uh, Damon, if, if there's not a, a diagram that goes up, I think we've talked about it and we're keeping all of the committees uh, the same slate. So if you're serving on the committee board, finance and investment or program, you will, you will maintain that same position. Uh, another comment that I do wanna make as, as Mr. Badger alluded to, the, the influx of funds that's coming through stimulus programs, whether it's the city's 378 million that they're setting up different committees to uh, see how that rolls out. I saw that the state is also getting 3.4 billion or maybe somewhere in that range uh, to roll that out. Is there any strategies or objectives that we need to be talking to any stakeholders to get, get some of that so we can get back to what Mr. Brown and, and, and then we're able to do way back to, to give us that reserve. Is this an opportunity that we can dig in and try to create some type of uh, carve out of, of some of that and relates to affordable housing to get some of that to, to piggy bank that reserve fund? Yes, that's a great question. And it relates to what we just discussed as it relates to our strategic plan rollout, the Resilient New Orleans finance plan. We're preparing to communicate our needs to the city and to other funders, but specifically the city. Uh, so this is an opportunity for each one of our board members to reach out to the city council, uh, to one, communicate our needs, communicate that we are launching our strategic plan. I know that some board members have already taken that step. Mr. Brown communicated that he's taken that step. Uh, so I suggest that we, the rest of the board uh, communicate to their council offices. We are doing that as well. We're setting up meetings to just uh, have one-on-ones with each council member uh, and let them know our plans and, and the needs to, in fact, develop those plans. So the Resilient New Orleans plan does have a multi-million dollar price tag on it. I won't reveal a number yet because Mr. Badger is still refining that with the staff. Um, but we, we can start by asking for support at this local level. And if you have relationships beyond the local level, state or federal, we need you to reach out to those uh, individuals as well. Got it. Damon, I really right. thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. I, I really believe that if we had just one demonstration unit with all of these innovative techniques that can be employed with our green mortgage program with all of the things that we can do, I think it would be incumbent upon us maybe to consider redeveloping one of our pathway properties as a demonstration project for individuals and stakeholders to see what our future would look like if they would invest in our plans. Yeah. Yes, sir, Mr. Brown, that is a part of the action plan this year. 
uh, we've been using a working title housing innovation fund, as you know, so we are still considering those demonstration units and possibly keeping one or two for satellite offices for financing mm -hmm. ones. But the community is uh, interested in us moving on and we do hear from them from time to time uh, about various things going on in the neighborhood. So developing those demonstration units is a part of that priority list and it's a part of the funding request. So when, when we say funding request, we're asking for at least all that we know as it relates to single family, multifamily, and the resiliency investments that we want to make. Um, so it is going to be a fairly large ask. It's going to come in phases, but that is a part of uh, the housing demonstration. Green housing demonstration is a part of that uh, initial ask. Thank you. Uh, is there any public comment? Naja Elizabeth? No public comments at this time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I had a phone call to come in. It seems that there's no public comment. Is there any other question from the board or staff before we uh, have a motion to adjourn? Seems uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to let you know that I, I was able to make uh, part of the meeting. So I just wanted to say uh, hello and I'm happy to be able to uh, make the meeting. And I welcome Jarvis. Thank you. And, and, and let the record reflect that Ms. Banks did uh, go in the meeting. So I, I did see you pop up. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. And now I'll move to Jarvis. Second. Hey, the, it's been moved and properly second. Everybody have a great rest of your evening. Uh, and looking forward <laughs> to the work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.